Hi. Hi, everyone. And welcome to a little introduction that I thought would be really useful for landowners trying to map or get to grips with the different spatial layouts that we have in the Western Cape and across South Africa. So I would really love to introduce you to a very useful tool that was developed by Elsenberg, and it's called Cape Farm Mapper. And um, this really gives you an awesome sense of the spatial data we use in all the management plans and can be really useful for the management of your site. So bear with me. And I'm going to share my screen and show you how this, this GIS, this mapping tool works. So what I will send is a link that introduces you to, takes you to this page. And this is, you can see at the top here, gisalsenberg.com, and, and it's called Cape Farm Mapper. So this is, unfortunately, it doesn't run nationwide, but it covers the Western Cape, which is, which is really great and has been very, very useful for the verification and validation project for private nature reserves. So to run you through the basics of this app, you will be introduced to this page. You can literally just cross that out and you can zone into wherever you would like to go. So I can just use my mouse and I can come right into Rawsonville or pivot around and drag the screen where I'd like to be located. So we over Stellenbosch, I can also zoom out as well. And what's really useful about this, this tool is you can add different layers to it. So you've got here on your right hand side, you've got base, base map. This changes your background or the base of the map. So right now it's on Esri image. I, if I change it to Blue Streets, it will reload and it'll give a more simplified map um, and a different background. You've got the choice of Google Maps, Google Streets, Isery, um, all of those. And so play around with that. It's quite nice changing the background and what brings out the layers, the different layers that you choose. Um, so when I talk about layers, it's the different layers. Maybe it's a vegetation layer. Maybe it's a conservation layer. Um, and this is where you find it right here. So add layers to the map. This wonderful box comes up. So we've got different brackets at the top here, Surveyor General. This is your farm portions, your earths, anything like that you'd like to add. Farm portions, of course, that's what I often go for. Um, your resource layers, this is the one that I rely on a lot. And I think you'll all find it really fascinating is that you can bring up all sorts of information, agriculture, um, climate, all of that, scroll, scroll through and play around with them a bit. But what I work with a lot is this conservation little key here. And so you can put in your protected areas. And when I put it in, I just click the little blue tick. Um, your biosphere reserves, your marine, um, uh -oh, your what we use a lot, the critical biodiversity areas, um, your critical biodiversity areas degraded. This is basically areas, the whole of the country has been mapped and identified roughly where are the critical biodiversities. And this is generally informs, let's say where a private nature reserve could be located. Um, generally a nature reserve will have really good biodiversity on site and has been earmarked by the critical biodiversity areas. Um, the ecological support areas, this is also linking to the critical biodiversity areas, but might not be as critically endangered or um, as intact, but it still has good um, ecosystem support that it can supply. Um, and then ecosystem threat, so play around with all of these. Um, then you can also apply the geology, the groundwater invasive plants, um, risks and vulnerabilities. This brings in your felt fires when the last felt fires were there, your soils, topography, vegetation types. Um, there's just so, so much on this. So I really encourage you to play with it a bit. So once you've selected something from um, these different layers and you've clicked them and the tick has gone, the plus sign has gone green, 
they then come up on your right hand side here as different layers. I can close this. Now these are the different layers that are portrayed now on the map. So now if I want to remove or, or bring it back on, I click this blue tick, it takes it away and I click the blue tick and it brings it back. So those are all the farm portions. Um, what we can do is let's remove all of them. And what we can do is find a reserve. Um, we'll head out by felt drift. And if we bring up protect areas, this is Krut Patanosta. Um, it's a reserve that we've been working with on this, on this project and we can see it comes up green. So what I'd love for you all to do is just check and make sure that you do, as a private nature reserve, you do come up green. Um, and if not, we can help rectify that as well. And then um, you can see what critical biodiversity exists around your site. Um, and if you are wanting to find out what these all mean, the different colors, you can come across to legend. And this will give you a breakdown of um, what it means. CBA, remember critical biodiversity areas. Um, then what is very, very useful so this, if you hover your mouse over any of these, it gives you a name of what it is. So this is layers. This is if you want to play around with your layers. Then if you'd like to print the map, you can come to map export. You can put the map title in, and then you can, down below here is export map. So what will then happen? It thinks about it for a little while and it, or longer than we'd like, and it has an option that you can then download the map or save it. I don't know why it's, so there we go, download map, and it gives you this. What I generally do is I right click and I save image as. So that's just a right click and save image as. And then I can go back and I can exit that. And yeah, so really an awesome tool to get to grips with and understand what your property has on it and what has been mapped and what, when we say top assessment, what people are actually looking at um, over and around your site. Great, I hope that helps and have a lovely day. Bye.